Bionicle, Legends 4, Legacy of Evil Written by Greg Fashti, recording by Paki Nuva Chapter 5 3,000 years ago Hakan crouched on a Gar Metru rooftop. Lariska was next to him, toying with her blades as she always did. At first, Hakan had dismissed this as a nervous habit. Later, he realised her daggers were probably the only friends she truly trusted. It was another dark, cold and dangerous night in Metronui. Hakan had seen too many of them by now. After the incident with the Kanoe dragon, the Shadowed One had made a few more attempts, some obvious, some not, to either seize control of the city or else secure a base there. Each time, his efforts had been frustrated by the Toa. It came as no surprise that the Shadowed One had become obsessed with Metru Nui. When an attempt by Thok to kidnap Turagaduma failed, the ruler of the Dark Hunters reached the end of his patience. He assembled a legion of his best operatives and ordered them to invade and capture Metru Nui. This struck many, including Hakan, as a very strange and highly risky idea. Dark Hunters lived in the shadows, struck quickly, and disappeared. They didn't form armies and invade cities. There's a word for a dark hunter in daylight, Hakan had said at the time. A target. Still, the plan had seemed to be working. A couple of hundred dark hunters stormed Metrunui in the dead of night, taking the Vaki and Likan's team of Toa completely by surprise. While the Matoran took cover, they seized control of most of the city, the Toa and Turagaduma were forced to take refuge inside the Colosseum. Victory seemed only days away. Then everything went wrong. The Toa of Water managed to slip through the Dark Hunter lines and swim the ocean. At the first island she came to, she dragged herself to the Turaga and begged for help for Metru Nui. The result was that close to a hundred Toa descended on the city and turned what should have been a quick fight into a protracted siege. Toa and Dark Hunters clashed in metru to metru, street to street fighting that lasted months. By now, both sides were hurting badly. Work in the city had largely ground to a halt. Damage to the different metru was extensive. Meanwhile, with so many Dark Hunters tied down in Metru Nui, the flow of treasure coming into the vaults of the organization had slowed to a trickle. Both Duma and the Shattered One knew some bold strike was needed to end this war before there was nothing left to fight over. Hakan's recollections were interrupted by the sight of a lone Toa on the streets below. It was a Toa of air, judging from the colour of his armour, and his mask and weapon matched Vazok's description of Toa Nidiki. Hakan smiled. Here was a wonderful opportunity to not only take one more Toa out of the fight, but rob Vazok of a chance for revenge at the same time. He was about to spring when Lariska stopped him. One more dead Toa does us no good, she said. Let me handle this. And grab more glory for yourself, Hakan snarled. Lariska smiled in reply. Let me put this another way. Stay out of my way while I handle this, or... We'll pick up where we left off in the Shadowed One's arena. Without another word, she leapt to another rooftop, then another, and finally to the ground. She was moving in the general direction of the Colosseum, a sure way to attract the attention of the Toa. Down below, Nidiki took the bait. There was a brief, inconclusive fight that left Hakan unsatisfied. There had been at least three perfect openings for Lariska to kill the Toa and she had let all of them slip by. He wondered if there might be some way to use that information to his advantage. The Toa disappeared briefly. Hakan could hear Lariska talking. Then Nidiki was visible again, and he and Lariska were having a discussion. Hakan was too far away to hear what they were saying. He considered and rejected the idea of Lariska planning to defect to the Toa. She'd look lousy in a mask, and she knows it, he thought. When Lariska returned, she had a look on her face like a Mawaka who had just eaten a gucko bird. He's willing to deal. We have to get a message to the Shadowed One. What if it's a trick? 
Lariska shook her head. I don't think so. He's nowhere near as good a liar as he thinks he is. Some day, that will probably cost him. The message dispatched via trained Nui Rama was short and to the point. Toa Nadiki would arrange for the capture of Turaga Duma, Toa Likan, and the rest of Metru Nui's defenders in exchange for rule over the city. The Shadowed One's answer was just as direct. Agree to Nadiki's demands, and once the war was won, eliminate him. Lariska had arranged a meeting with Nadiki for the next night. As before, Hakan remained in the shadows and watched. He knew better than to trust a Toa, and he wasn't completely certain of Lariska's motives either. Maybe she was planning to cut herself in as future queen of Metrunui. Nadiki was late and looked worried. What's the answer? Come on, come on, I'm risking everything just being here. Calm down, said Lariska. Were you followed here? I don't think so, said Nadiki. Lakan told me to head down to the docks to meet a supply boat. He can't tear himself away from being leader of the Toa army long enough to actually do any work. He's bitter, thought Hakan. Okay, we can work with that. It's a deal, Lariska said. Tomorrow, you lead Likan and the Colosseum Guard into the Canyon of Unending Whispers in Pometru. We'll be scattered in the caves and foothills. Once it's over, I'm to take care of Turagaduma personally. And the city will be yours, Nidiki. What do you plan to do with it? Hakan didn't hear Nidiki's answer. His attention was drawn to a brief gleam of red and gold from a nearby rooftop. It was Toa Likan. He had followed Nidiki and heard everything. The Dark Hunter's mind raced. If he warned Lariska, the trap could be called off in plenty of time to save the Shadowed One's army. On the other hand, if he didn't, Lariska would be disgraced and the war would be over. The only flaw would be he would wind up a prisoner of the Toa. He needed to find a way to save his own metallic hide. Nidiki left. Lariska had not yet returned. Hakan climbed up to the roof and began following Toa Likan. It didn't take long for the Toa to detect his presence. Likan whirled and hurled flames from his two fire greatswords. Hakan evaded and hit Likan with a mental blast. The Toa staggered, but recovered, slamming his two swords together to make a shield. He then tossed the shield with incredible accuracy, knocking Hakan's feet out from under him. The shield was on its way back to Likan when Hakan nailed it with his heat vision, sending it spiralling off course. The Dark Hunter sprang to his feet. Lava Launcher pointed right at Toa Likan. I could kill you now, Toa, but there's been enough killing, Hakan said, making an effort to sound sincerely concerned about the loss of life. In truth, the only life he cared anything for was his own. It's time to end this war. Likan said nothing, simply glared at Hakan with contempt. He might as well have thrown a snowball for all his opinion mattered to the Dark Hunter. You know what your pal Nadiki is planning with us. You're probably setting up a trap of your own, said Hakan. You figure you'll slap all of us into a prison cave somewhere until the stars go out. But maybe there's a deal to be made here. I don't make deals with Dark Hunters, Lee Khan snapped. You'll deal with this one, Hakan replied, doing his best to control his temper. Or maybe you'd rather not know what happened to the Makoki Stone all those years ago. Lee Khan's body language conveyed, if only for a moment, that he was surprised by Hakan's statement. Sensing an opening, the Dark Hunter pressed on. I stole it, he lied and I gave it to the Shadowed One as a sort of entrance fee into the Dark Hunters. If we are going to lose this war, then we are. But I propose a trade. You get the Makoki Stone, and we leave this island under our power. Toa Likan wrestled with the idea. Free, the Dark Hunters would always be a threat. But the Makoki Stone was something his fellow Toa had been willing to die to protect thousands of years before. Even if he didn't know its true importance, it must have been vital in some way. 
Could he betray the memory of his deceased comrades by passing up the chance to get it back? You'll come with me, Li Kan said. Then you'll send a message to your leader. Tell him the war is lost. If he hands over the Makoki stone, we'll let you and the other dark hunters leave Metrunui and return home. On two conditions. Which are? You never come back. Ever. And you take Nadiki with you. I want him out of my sight. Hakan smiled. How do I know you'll keep your end of the deal? Toa don't go back on their word, Li Khan replied. Hakan chuckled. I guess Nadiki must have missed that part of the training. Everything went as Toa Li Khan had planned it. When he, Nadiki, and the rest of the Colosseum Guard marched into the Canyon of Unending Whispers, they were immediately ambushed by Dark Hunters. A moment later, the Dark Hunters found themselves surrounded by 300 Toa who had arrived in the city on the supply boats the night before. Having lived under the harsh discipline of the Shadowed One for so long, the Dark Hunters fully expected the same treatment from the Toa. Failure, they assumed, would mean death. Now what? a defiant Lariska asked Toa Likan. Do you march us all into the sea? Hakan held his breath. Would Likan keep his part of the bargain? The Toa of Fire hesitated a moment. Then he said, A messenger was sent to the Shadowed One before you ever reached the canyon. You will be allowed to walk out of here the same way you walked in. Likan went on to outline the same conditions he had related to Hakan. Nadiki was shocked to discover that he, too, was being banished from the city. Lariska looked disappointed. Death would have been preferable to the punishment the Shadowed One would dish out for her failure. The entire scene filled Hakan with glee. By the next morning, the Dark Hunters and Nadiki had been loaded into ships headed for the Shadowed One's island. Nadiki stood by himself at the rail, gazing at the city he was sure he would never see again. None of the Dark Hunters came anywhere near him. Watching the scene, Hakan could not help but remember the Shadowed One's words from so long ago. I dislike a traitor, but I despise an incompetent one. The Shadowed One would keep his word as much as he ever did. It would be 2,000 years before another Dark Hunter would set foot on Metru Nui, and one of the three who would make the return trip would be Nadiki. The ruler of the Dark Hunters was not, however, content to allow the Makoki Stone to remain in Toa hands. Six months after the Dark Hunter surrender on Metru Nui, he dispatched a team to the Toa base where the stone was being held. They successfully stole the tablet. The Shadowed One ordered it split into six pieces so he could earn six times the ransom for it. The Brotherhood of Makuta were the high bidders for the stones, despite the fact that they, too, had no idea of their true significance. The only other problem left over from the Toa Dark Hunter War was Nadiki himself. Despite Lariska's insistence that neither she nor the ex-Toa were responsible for the defeat, she was punished severely and Nadiki was shunned. The Shadowed One valued Nadiki's knowledge and experience, but could not bring himself to fully trust him. He knew also that Nadiki was scheming to escape the island in hopes of someday resuming his career as a Toa. The Shadowed One's solution to this situation was elegantly evil. He allowed Nadiki to get so close to freedom the ex-Toa could practically taste it. Then, at the last moment, he had a new recruit, Rudaka, use her powers to mutate Nadiki into an insectoid monster. Now so hideous that Matoran society would never accept him, he was doomed to remain a dark hunter for the rest of his days. And how about the rest of us? Hakan wondered, as he watched Nadiki react in horror to his new form. Are we all to stay dark hunters forever? Or will there be an opportunity someday to say goodbye to this wretched place? And have power the Shadowed One never even dreamed of? It was an idea well worth thinking about, he decided. End of chapter 5